Welcome back to Purely His Podcast. I'm Elizabeth Armstrong, and we're on our sixth podcast, and I want to talk about trust. There is something the Lord was just speaking to me last week through a very different scenario, but I want to share it with you today. But I'm going to start with with, um, reading Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And actually, I want to stop there for one second, because a couple years ago when I When I read the scripture, and you know, sometimes we just read scripture and read right through it, and we don't have a ton of revelation, but I read this one day and I realized, wait, it says all of your heart. Does that mean we could trust him with part of it? And I just had this whole thing about realizing that it is so important that we trust him with every aspect of our life, every part of our heart. Um, And then the scripture goes on to say, and lean not on your own understanding, which obviously that is huge. (laughs) In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Okay, so this is what happened last week with my niece. Um, I had her over and I had bought her this canvas and these watercolors. And it was just to paint a picture for her family and um, for her sister's room. And so she's only she's only three years old. So I set up everything And I was ready to, you know, kind of guide her through painting this picture. And so I'm just going to actually read the journal entry that I made um, about this whole scenario. So this is what I wrote. And this whole thing just ties in with trust. And I'm going to talk about it afterwards. But this is what I started with. When I was sitting with my niece, I started to hear the Lord speak to me. I watched as she choosing to mix every color together to paint her picture. I told her a few times, you don't want to do that. It will turn brown. As I wanted to guide her in my way, I could feel the Lord say, just trust. I watched as she continued to mix every color together and even just paint with a brush full of water. But I soon began to see beauty. Even then, I felt every step of the way she might somehow mess with what was now looking like a masterpiece for a three-year-old. As she finished what looked like was going to be nothing special, it looked like a real piece of art. This is the same with our walk with Jesus. Trust means you trust no matter what you see. And when the Lord speaks to let it go, just watch in faith. He just wants us to trust him. And later when I asked, what is this picture of? She said, it's the clouds and stars and Jesus and God. Let God paint your picture. So isn't that such a beautiful picture of trusting the Lord? As I was watching her do things that in my, in my mind did not make sense. You know, as an adult, you're like, oh, we don't mix every color that will make brown. But this picture turned out so beautiful And as the Lord began to speak, every step of the way, I felt this sense of, oh no, oh no, it's not going to turn out right. And you know, you could be saying like, she's three years old, just give it a break. But I don't know, just that day, I think it was honestly just the Lord was wanting to speak to my heart. This is so something that we can apply to our lives and, and what our walk with Jesus actually looks like. So as she was, you know, taking those colors and she was choosing to do all these things, it took so much trust to believe that something beautiful was going to like that this picture was going to turn out so beautiful. So these are just three points that I got from this whole scenario. One that she didn't need my help. In fact, I would have messed it up if I tried to guide her Two, I was worried the whole time and could have enjoyed the process knowing when you hear God's voice, it's going to be okay. And three, what God does, his path, it it doesn't always make sense in the natural. And that is where, you know, the end of Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, when it says, lean not on your own understanding. So basically, God does not need our help. He needs our cooperation. And help means the action of helping someone do something. Now that sounds good. That sounds great. But you know, God, he, God is God. God doesn't need our help. But cooperation means the process of working together to the same 
end, basically the same goal. We are Jesus's hands and feet on the earth, but God is who guides us. We go and do and make the moves that he tells us to, but he has the plan for our life and it's up to us to follow his lead. And you know, even when it comes to following your calling, the story that actually comes to mind is Joseph. He didn't make the dream he had of his brothers bowing down to him come to pass. In fact, his life looked like it was going to be completely opposite at times, but God was working. Joseph found favor with his father. He, he gave him the coat of many colors, and then his brothers threw him in a pit. They sold him as a slave. He found favor with Potiphar, um, Pharaoh's captain of the guard, but then got falsely accused. He spent time in prison. He found favor again there. But the journey was long, and he was seemingly forgotten. Finally, he was brought to Pharaoh and interpreted his dream and became second in command. God used him to save the people and to fulfill what he promised. I know from experience that trying to carry the weight of what God speaks over you can be too much of a load, even just in your thoughts, because A lot of times what God speaks is so much bigger than us. And when he does use you, you will, you know, it's him. And that's where Isaiah 26, three says that you will keep in perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast because they trust you. That's where perfect peace comes in is when we are trusting the father. We're trusting his process. Imagine if Joseph was just not trusting God throughout that whole process, how painstaking, like how stressful that would have been. But because of the nature of when you read, it sounds like he abided in God's peace because he yielded and trusted that God was going to, he was going to make a way that he was going to bring him out of this place and fulfill what he promised. And not that Joseph might not have gotten weary, but he obviously kept trusting the Lord. So trust brings perfect peace. We cannot have perfect peace if we do not trust. And of course, the whole other aspect of not trusting would be worrying. And the Bible says plenty about worrying. Matthew 6, 27 through 29 says, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? I always like that part, (laughs) the Bible mentioning wildflowers. I love wildflowers. But, and then it says, they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon and all of his splendor was not dressed as one of these. And then I love Matthew 11, 28 through 30 that says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guide your heart and your minds in Jesus Christ. We're called to trust God with everything. Our family, anybody and everybody, our finances, what's happening in the world, everything with all of our heart. And learning not to rely on our own understanding. So trust the process. Yield to the Lord's instructions receive God's perfect peace, and watch him unfold his plan for your life. And if you ever feel like God doesn't have the best for you, that what he has is, is not as fun or it's, it's boring, that is a lie from the enemy because God only has your best interest in mind ever. It's always for the better. So trust in the Lord with all of your heart. You can trust him. You can trust that he's creating something beautiful no matter how hard it gets. Trust him and yield to his guiding, his leading for your life. Because there's another scripture that says that he leads me down the pathway of righteousness. So trust, yield to the process, and know that he is creating something more beautiful, more amazing than you could ever imagine. Whether you see it here on earth or not, heaven is the ultimate goal. Thanks for tuning in. Have a blessed week and I will see you next podcast.